owner? Did she? Uh, yes. All right. So if when she bought it, it would have been listed as a two bedroom, but she did this work. Do we ever like require someone to give us paperwork from what they they did or or well i don't think she bought her for not what's that i don't think she bought the house and and did those bedrooms i think that's the way she bought it oh you think it was there already oh god yeah do you so do you think it was held out as a four bedroom when she bought it i imagine it probably was yeah that looks like it's been that way since the 70s I would guess, yeah. This is 96 Wyoming, right? The interesting yeah. thing is, rather than be listed as a two-bedroom or a four-bedroom on Zillow, it's listed as a three-bedroom. Okay. <laughs> and what's what's the what's the spread in uh? It's, it's just funny. What's the spread in square footage? Hers versus ours. Hers versus she's she. We're eleven. The appraisal claims it's eight hundred eighty-two square feet. We're at eleven ninety-two. So not, I'm not relying on this, but I was just curious what Zillow would say. And it, it lists as three bedroom, 1192. Sometimes that information actually comes from an owner. Comes from uh, us. I, don't know. I uh, oh, definitely, oh, well, oh, but owners, owners were able to edit it. Oh, so okay. It, 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 I guess this comes from, from, from us. Interesting. Okay. I vote to deny. I don't know about you guys. I'll second to deny. Yeah, I'll, I'll vote to deny in, in part because I, I would require more of an explanation or more convincing detail about that floor to understand where the heights are and what it's been used for and what the history is of it, how she bought it. Yeah, well, I'm assuming she bought it that way. And because uh, I was there, and uh, let's see, the, if you look at those two reports, pages 11. And 12, I listed the property multiple times going back to 1996. Let me just see when she bought it. Uh, where are we here? So basically, it's been treated this way for a long time. Oh, and God, yeah. Someone, someone told her. She bought it in 96. You can't, ceilings, you can't have ceilings in a living area under seven foot. And she thought she might have a way of cutting it out. Uh, I say she did that. That's what this would seem like. I, I would want to see so much more information to be convinced that this is not really living area. And those pictures look to the contrary. So, yeah, I, I'm guessing she told the appraisers what she wanted. And the appraiser said, OK, if we use this measuring method, it won't show up as, as livable square footage. And the fact that the heat doesn't work is, you know, the cost to cure that is is minimal radiators there you know if they whatever my heating system breaks down i don't get to uh get an abatement right no i don't th i don't think so not from, not from us anyway just I rush in and then get my heat fixed after my yeah that's with you no i yeah i i don't i don't think the homeowners met a burden here so i'd put to deny all righty so we are on to number 44 And this is one of the ones that uh, both you guys are familiar with because it's the Highland Avenue um, widening. Or do you live in the other end of town? So, uh, oh, no. I should um, I should recuse myself from this one since I I feel pretty close to these people. Not so. Oh, this is this is no. a grant. They're both granted. So, oh, then I then I want to be responsible and tell them. Okay, yeah, help. you're gonna. No, no, no. I, <laughs> Use it in your campaign right. literature. No, I'm just I'm kidding. They're just their friends. So okay, what I did here, um, they didn't have that much taken from them. Uh, the, we're number forty four. I took the hundred eighty square feet that they took out of the equation, so that changed the land value a little bit. And there is what's called a permanent easement on the property for part part of it which means that you know, the town can come on to the property to do any kind of repairs that they might need to do with, um, with wiring or whatever that's under the ground. And my, basically my standard on that, unless it's very intrusive, is um, 
I usually take 5% off the land value for, uh, you know, in perpetuity. Um, so that gives them uh, 23,000. I don't know, and Barry, you may know, and you don't have to say anything about it, what these individuals were paid for the taking. I think it was very small. Okay, because I know- I, the know, I know, I don't know the exact figure, but I remember just at least the scuttlebutt was that it wasn't, it, it was not a generous day. So and I, I do think these these properties generally, not just this house, but they, they've been really affected because you take small, small, what you might consider small strips, but from small properties that when you look outside the house's footprint, you're, you're taking away anything that remotely gave them space, so. Well, if you take a look at this thing, uh, take a look at page four. You can see what they took was absolutely minimal. That's in the, uh, it's in the yellow. I don't know how the colors came through. Um, at the top middle of the page, you can see that area in yellow. Yeah. That's what they took. Now, is that the report from what they planned to take or what was actually taken? This, far, I... this came from our engineering guys, as far as I know. Okay. This is, this is the bottom line. Because during the process, what I do know is that where things were marked, like even where they put the like um, utility pole ended up further in than what was planned. Like they did a few, th it, it almost seemed like multiple steps of taking a couple feet here, a couple feet there. But it, you can you can see there's very little room. Yeah, there is. The structure, this, this really does. And then, you know. Guys, I gotta say, I'm lost on this one. Uh, Chip, you said, Artie, you know, I don't know. What, hmm. what no, happened? I said you don't know. I think you meant Stan and me because Stan we live right there. They live right there. We live Four a couple Highland Avenue is being ripped up as you're going toward Needham, uh, Newton. Over by a pancake house? Yes. Yes. Where the, where you, that it's used to pancake be. house. We're going way back, buddy. You're because talking so about like three squares. <laughs> yeah. What was, what was it? Bickford's? Bickford's. So near that Island. intersection? Well, all of Highland yeah. Avenue over the bridge and into Newton. Oh um, yeah, has been under construction for a couple of years. Okay, so and there were some people? land there were some land takings, and yep. they took a piece of this guy's property. This isn't near Staples, no. Uh, no, no, it's no, on well, this side, this side of one twenty eight. But we're going to get to Staples side. One couple of blocks before one twenty eight. Um, if you're heading out towards Newton, this house is on the right hand side just before Hunting Ave, which is that last road. Uh, yeah, that's Evelyn road. Evelyn road. road. Evelyn Road, I know, is tucked behind Muzzy. I'm, I'm no, confused. no, not Evelyn No, this road. isn't Evelyn. So are you looking at 45? Yeah. My stock, my stack was out of order too. No, this is the Highland Avenue. So oh, go, geez, you're, you're look. probably looking at 45 and then 44 comes 44, after 44. Okay. Sorry about that. That's right. Um, so how do they take it? By em eminent domain? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And it, you know, it, it, I don't even know whether it was three feet, seven feet, five feet, whatever it was. Um, it looks like there's a marking of five feet if I'm reading this right, but it, yeah, and then it narrows yeah, down, but you're talking about a house that had very little area. So it, it did have an impact. I said, it's one of those areas where I, I you know, I, I definitely feel a lot of empathy to people having this taken. And then when they did it, they marked where they're going to put the utility pole and then put the utility pole like two feet closer so even what they have that remains is kind of cut by a utility pole. And so they get, they were compensated for it, but obviously not enough or, you know, not, not it enough. Was, it was minimal as my okay, understanding. The only thing I know about the compensation, we're going to do another one in a couple minutes. And they took less land and they gave the guy 85,000. That's in the report. That oh, really? This guy, I didn't get a report on how much. The next one we're going to do, you're going to, it's a business, but you're going to see that he got $85,000. Um, so I, I could be, I could have wrong information, but the, the I don't know there, what these yeah, people I, got. I mean, that Whether doesn't really, have, that doesn't, would that affect our thinking? Because what they're given is sort of something that represents how much the value was driven down. Uh, no, I don't know how they arrive at whatever they give them. They may have given these guys, 50 cents for all I know, but all I know is the guy down the street did get 85,000. 
because I have the letter from the state telling him he's getting 85,000. But we're giving, what I'm looking to give these guys is permanent relief for, you know, having some of the land taken by taking 5% oh, off I, the total I, land I, value. Yeah. They took far less than 5% and, and abating the money for the 180 square feet that was taken, you know, from his land value in perpetuity as well. They're giving them the uh, knocking off 23,000. So I moved to grant like you've put down. Okay. Did they request a specific amount off? Uh, no, I don't think he did. Sometimes they put that opinion of value, but they didn't fill anything. Yeah, all, he, all he's doing is telling us that they took some of the land. You know, obviously we knew that. That's why I went to engineering to find out how much got taken and how much had had a repair easement on it. So, you know, I could come up with something that, uh, that was reasonable. And you see a lot of these pages in my back and forth with, uh, with engineering as to what was taken. And again, very little was taken, but they did put it, you know, an easement to uh, come onto the property and repair it. I think it's beyond that, though. I think it's also where they put the poles that take away usable land. In, in fairness, I, I don't. I don't know if the. I don't know if the poles are on the land they took or not. I assume it is, but it, you know, it may not be. No, no. I think it might be that the poles are on their land. Like they took land. And then I think so. I mean, nothing would prevent them from coming back with another application if, like, the remaining land is cut in half in certain spots by a pole and trying to lay out a better theory, right? Yeah, I mean, they can. They can they always haven't come been back. very specific. You know, if we give them the twenty three thousand, they can certainly appeal it. Well, do they have to appeal, or do they do another application to say? I mean, when you say appeal, you're talking about going to the appellate tax board. Uh, no, normally what we do would. When we process these applications, send them out, if somebody calls as an interim step, we'll allow them to come in and they can talk to the three of you guys and make their case. Like we did last year. Yeah. And then if uh, you guys decide to stand pat, then they can go to the appellate tax board. Gotcha. I was curious about that too, because the, the, I'm just finishing up doing those tests. And I remember here, you know, just doing the, course about the appellate tax board and this and that and uh the only experience i had was when that that guy came on and we had a meeting with him in the morning last year um uh, sorry this is right before oh i remember no no i was on that call I think. oh were you oh okay. yeah I think he you... was a very nice guy very reasonable but kind of didn't make his case he almost made the opposite case so i was Wait. wondering in my head like why didn't that go to appellate tax board like um i thought if we I thought after like we, this, what we're doing now, they could go to the tele tax for it. But it's like, it seems like they have one more chance. They can. They can go directly to the appellate tax board. A lot of them do. Oh, okay. But if somebody so call, these people call up saying, I don't think this is fair, I'll offer them the opportunity to meet with you guys. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's funny that this, uh, of all the ones we've looked at, this is the first time where I know the people well. And my first reaction was, oh, I almost want to stay out of this. But I guess in, in town work, there'd be people on this board who would know a quarter of the people applying. I don't know if that's enough of a reason to have to recuse yourself, right? I mean, people, if someone recuse themselves every time they know someone or even consider them just friends. Yeah, I, it doesn't, I, doesn't happen very often. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't have any financial interdependence with them or anything like that but okay so so i mean i think i can vote on it so i i would vote to grant as well um i'm actually curious about this one whether you know there's of what remains with the easement it's more than just um a right to come on to repair and it could be that a chunk of land is no longer really usable because it's got a new pole or poles in the middle of it and that might amount to a loss of more than what's estimated here but yeah again the uh the drawings i got from engineering i'm not sure on the dates on them but uh 
Yeah, and I just I remember vaguely that the uh, that along the way it changed. And I don't know if this is the before or after because they they thought it was going to be one sort of minimal thing, and then it ended up a bit more than that. So yeah, and I, I'd be curious if if they were compensated anywhere near like the other guy was. And that cuts two ways. One curiosity, right? Like, cause I, I do wonder if someone takes the time to negotiate if they get a better deal and the other is if you're getting that kind of money that might be an indicator that the town is estimating that kind of loss of value right well the town doesn't do it it's um the town doesn't give them the money the state does the state okay so that the state yeah. state is estimating that kind of loss of property value because they're not supposed to pay you more than a reasonable value right so I, supposedly but you'll see the next guy the guy who got okay. the 85 grand lost practically nothing and uh still got 85 grand so that's why i was curious as to what these guys got but i can't actually call them up and ask them and of course this uh this one's coming through davis mom and they probably negotiated their their taking payment right which one no davis mom is, the, is number 45 yeah that's what i'm saying and i didn't know if you meant that was the next one or uh yeah it is are we all done yeah. with that one well i think we're all in favor of the granting it the proposed grant yeah Yes. Okay, so we're on to number 45. This one, I, this guy is a attorney who has a long reputation as just filing. He files on things where the owner doesn't know he's filing. I don't think it's the case here, but um, I'm not sure what he's talking about. This is a residential home. It's got the assessed value down as 437, 410. Not sure where he got that. Um, the assessed value of the property is a million seven. The guy paid a million eight thirty five for it in December of two thousand and nineteen. Uh, let's see. You know the property record card. That picture is not the house that's there now. We don't. The house that's there now is on page six. It's a cute little place, as you can see. If I have, like you said, he, he paid more than it's assessed for. And then the best comp that I came up with from sales from uh, 2020 was 69 Nardone. And that's, they have like 20 more square feet, but you have it assessed at a million nine and he, you have him at a million seven. Yeah, and you can see the, well, I put in the average assessed value of all the comps. Um, is coming in at a million eight. So the average sale price is a million nine, and he paid a million eight thirty five. So yeah, he's assessed at one point seven. So seems fairly cut and dry. Where does he think he should be? Because he didn't put anything down. We say, where does he think he should be? Where do I think he should be? Where does where he, does he think, think? Oh, he think. nothing there. But I mean, he's got the wrong assessed value by by a million three hundred thousand dollars too. So I'm not sure what he was doing with this application. What he has down there is the land value. Okay. All right. And I think I heard from other assessors that. He was trying to make the case that the pandemic caused the values to go down. Yeah, that's what the market's showing. <laughs> yeah, an act of God thing. I, I have no idea. I moved to deny. This house, I would probably, and I'm not relying on this comment, but this house would probably sell for well over $2 million right now on in the first day, right? The way everything's going. Uh, I would... I would guess so. I, I'm, I'm looking at, at this. This is a beautiful looking house and I'm looking at it compared to what a brand new house, not in a bad in our neighborhood, but the one that listed at like one nine and sold at 2.1 within hours. Um, um, I don't think I, I don't think we've seen any sign that the market's dropping because of the pandemic, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at this week's sales. So last two weeks from Banker and Tradesman, we've got 12 Bancroft Street at 3.5. 27 Coolidge, which is an old house. I think it may even be a land sale. 
at a million two sixty. These are closed deals. These are closed deals. Yeah. Uh, Thirty six Dell Avenue, which is not a tremendous location, three million bucks. Sixty two Sachem Road, two point two seven five. That's it. Wait, wait. Is that is that that that's that new house? It was two point two seven five. I just right. said two point one. 2.275, it was listed in the one nines. Okay, um, it's 62 Sachem Road. There's only it's, one going up there, right? Stanley, that's gotta be it, right? There's nothing else along that line that would be in the right. 2 million mark. That was listed at one nine, I think. Yeah, the market's explosive, no sign yeah, of it. it's crazy. I, I don't fully understand it, <laughs> but it's- I don't think anybody uh, does. Yeah. I anyway, think that he's getting a break at the 1.7. Yeah, he probably is. For sure. And Mark, the Mark Whitkin, he never puts yeah. down what he thinks the value is supposed to be. It's yeah. gone on for years with this person. Yeah, so I'd, I'd add in that, that that combines to like not meeting a burden is that there's not an explanation of where we'd expect to see it. So, yeah. Or, or a rationale for it. I think just look at the comps and you'll see yep. the sales. So I I've, I've vote to deny. Seconded. Okay, now we're on to same guy filing, but a completely different property. It's the uh, new hotel on First Avenue. What number is that? Uh, number 46. The one facing the highway? Yes. Yeah. Built it like three years ago. Yeah. And for the first time, they actually sent me income and expense information. So I could use that. That's all the stuff on page four. But because of the pandemic and its effect on hotels, I basically mirrored the, um, the information they gave me, even though they probably fudged it to the low end. But um, I use their average daily room rate. I use their vacancy. To, I matched it from the INE. I dropped their expenses by a third because they obviously there um, fewer people staying in the hotel. Their expenses are going to go down. But the uh, the bottom line is it dropped from seventeen six to twelve point two, from uh, twenty one to twenty two, and that I think you know again it's using their information to come up with the income value for the property. So I'm not sure what their argument is. Every, all these hotels are you know, gonna argue for uh, the fact that they were decimated and to a certain extent they were, but uh, they gave me enough information to come up with what I think is a reasonable value. You made the adjustments, Chip, and you went down in the value, like over 5 million. So I, I'm in the, of the opinion vote to deny. Hey, I, I'm curious about one thing. Would these numbers in the income statement include any government aid because of the pandemic? Or would folks feel entitled to leave off? Uh, yeah, they appropriate? would. I don't think that's going to be on there. Uh, you know, Which is an interesting fact because I, I know that I guess you don't have to include it on income tax returns um, to the extent you've received. I think that's right. I'm not positive, but I think that's right. But um, Okay, um, I I second stands. Third motion to deny. Okay, we're on to number forty-seven. This is kind of much ado about nothing. I don't know why I got so into this application, checking it out, but um, you know, I ran it by engineering. This guy and the property is apparently. Part of the property is actually a road. If you go to page four, you see the map and the blue line with the yellow highlighter is, uh, is, is basically the outline of this guy's property, which takes into account Alder Brook Lane. So he owns the road, but if you flip through a whole bunch of uh, flip through. Let me see here. Uh, 
I'm just trying to find the pages. I went up and I went back and looked up the deeds. Uh, you go to page 10. It's clearly outlined. You see the yellow highlighted portion? Is that page 10? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't see highlight. Oh, is there just a light oh, the highlighting? No, the above reference uh, land is subject to right away. Third paragraph from the bottom. Right. Am I looking at the same page 10? You look at Massachusetts quick claim deed? No. no. Am I looking at the wrong which property are we on? 47. 47. So, all right. Somehow. Somehow my stack just jumped, but some of these were out of order. Um, when I got it. Okay. Oops. All right, I'm with you now. Okay, again, this guy, just to summarize again, this guy's property, part of it is a road. And, you know, when he bought the property, it's clearly outlined on the deed that there is a uh, part of his land is subject to a right of way so people can get to the houses behind him. Uh, you see that on page 11. And he's got 1,875 feet is what makes up the road. So I gave him a 90% discount on, on that part of the land. And that's his residual land anyway, which is already priced very low. And then page 12, page 13, and page 14 are all reiterations of the, uh, the right of way that's been on that property for years and years and years. So, I mean, the bottom line is that I'm granting it or looking to grant it, but it's it's minimal amount of money simply because it's his residual land that's taken up, extra land. It's 1,800 square feet, and it gives him $2,900. Ooh, but, it's you know, I, I don't really know what else to give him. I think you made the adjustment, so it's... But I'm, and you're granting some money, so I'll move to grant. Second that. Okay, so he's all set. Uh, we are at number 48. Okay. Uh, this is fairly straightforward except for the fact that she gave me a comp and looking at it quickly, it looked like she had a point until I realized that um, when we brought the information over from the old system, for some reason, the fact that her comp did not have a basement, it came over without a basement. So looking at the two of them, the comp was less in value than her house, but it was basically because there was a mistake in the conversion. So what we did was um, we went out and looked at the other one, found out it had a basement. So we build them retroactively for the mistake that we made. We're allowed to do that from the time the bills go out until June 20th. It's called a revised and omitted bill. So she happened to pick a comp that had a mistake in it. We fixed the mistake, build the comp for the mistake. So what you're really looking at here is page 10, which are the comparable properties to hers that's sold. And if you go to page 10, you see the ones that are highlighted in red are um, the ones that are closest to her property. Again, this is this is your neighborhood, uh, Barry and Stan. Yeah. And you can see we got this property at a million two fifty. Similar properties right in the neighborhood, you know, all sold for a million three eighty and up. 
So I, you know, I, I look really at the comparison. It's not the date of sale on this one. What you say? Yeah, it's it's we, the, there was no sales from 2020. So yeah, was, I mean, uh, I, I was uh, looking for similar properties. Right. So, Na so you did it by neighborhood. Neighborhood right. comps. Yeah. Do you see these are all neighborhood 205? And they're all in the same range square footage, and they're all assessed for more than 21 Utica. And they're selling for a million four several years ago. So, yeah. And this one has no finished basement, but, uh, you know, that's going to add. Looking at that page chip, what I had written down was 35 Sagem, 34 John, 40 John, and 213 Webster. Yeah, that's why I highlighted all those in green. That's, okay, I have them on a post-it note on the front page. So, Move so to I deny. Like deny. Agreed. Huh? Agreed. Okay, so we're all good on that. The people who got the bill for the uh, for the revised and omitted, I'm sure we'll be calling any day now. Find out what that's oh, all about. They're, uh, that this person threw him under the bus. Yeah. Yeah, un unknowingly threw him under the bus. <laughs> okay, we are at. Uh, I, I, I wonder if it was like a friend. Like that's how they knew about it. It came to their attention, and they were jealous. <laughs> yeah, but it took me a little digging to figure out what it was. You know, I'm saying, geez, he's got a point here. Uh, um. Anyway, we're at number forty nine. This is, uh, you know, what Copley Motors is on Chestnut Street. Sure. Yeah. It's, Sell the Range Rovers and uh, yep. antique cars and that kind of stuff. Anyway, he says in his application that uh, it increased 35%, which it didn't. If you look at page three, you can see that it actually increased about 14%. And the reason for that was that the income that he reported for rent went up not dramatically, but it went up a bit. So that increased the value. It's pretty much the bottom line. They give a comp, which is a property they own. It's just a piece of land, small piece of land that's done at cost. And that didn't go up, obviously, because it's done at cost. But the actual property they're filing on, the sales showroom went up. The value went up because the rent they're collecting you know, went up. So, I mean, there's really not a hell of a lot to say about that one. You know, the, it's just like you went by the book. If you, if you get an I and E and it shows that there was an increase, then you just you went with the increase. Yeah, they, I mean, they reported it. This is like most of the commercial. They don't send an I and E, and we ended up we always deny it because we don't know what the rent is. Right. If you go to pages eight and nine, you'll see what they submitted. Um, right. Okay, we, we had them down for 14 bucks previously and they reported uh, they reported what amounts to 1551 a square foot or 16.16 a square foot, excuse me, if you look at page nine. So we, we basically just bumped the rent and we look at page eight and you'll see what it previously was. The showroom was at $14. And then this year they reported that per square footage, it's fifteen fifty one. No, it's actually 16. If you go to there, they had, they used the wrong square footage. They reported the wrong, it's actually 1,600 and 6,235 square feet. Look at page nine in the right hand side. I did the calculation. Okay. The actual rent went from 14 bucks to 16 bucks a square foot. Resulted in the value going from 716 to 818. Are they, the Copley are, are tenants here, right? I believe they are, yeah. Yeah. This is the old, the old Salomon. Salomon Toyota. Right. Yeah. And he's still the one of the sons is still the owner. Yeah. Of this. And he's the one that's filing the abatement. 
It's not the person who runs Copley Motors, is it? I no. don't think so. I don't think so. And right. that's really, that's irrelevant anyway, but uh, except that the, sometimes the tenant pays the taxes, so. Yeah, right, right. I vote to deny. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed to deny. Are we all set on that one? Yep. Okay, we're on to the other. Uh, the other taking is 49, number 50. And it's 49 Highland Avenue. And I basically gave this guy the same 5% I gave the other guy. Um, subtracted the land. But that, if you look at page three, Barry, you can see what he got for um, the land that they took from him. I mean, they may have been paying him for the inconvenience of the construction work going on too. I don't know how those payments are done, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I wonder how negotiate, I bet there's an initial offer and if you don't negotiate, you're not getting top dollar, right? It could be. I That would be my guess. But we value this property at uh, based on the income. So I actually, I just took 5%, 5% off the rent and gave him a 5% discount. It's the only way I could figure out how to do it. As you can see on page seven, the area in pink is what they actually took. And it's, it's, it's really not very much. I actually went over to the property and um, took a look at it. The area in blue, I believe is basically what they, they put a temporary easement on that just so they can park equipment and stuff there while the work was going on. And to the extent they explain, they, they explain that they're anticipating a greater cost of snow removal, that will be an increase in their expenses, which will have its own effect on reducing their taxes in the future anyway, right? Yeah, but I'm not sure what, about the snow removal thing. I mean, you see, they, they bring that up, right? That, that, but if they have less land, they'd be removing less snow, you would think. Well, but, they're saying um, they have no place to put it. And I, I don't know if they're suggesting that plowing highlands, there's going to be more snow removed. This is what I think they're saying. Highland Avenue is wider, so more snow is going to get removed by the town. And it's going to get pushed into those walls. So not removed, maybe plowed. And they're, they're, they're anticipating that they're going to face more snow being pushed onto their property in a smaller oh, area with no place to put it. I think that's what they're saying. But even if they're right, and I don't know how much the town removes versus plows snow, but that would just increase their expenses to get snow removed or dealt with, and they'll pay less in taxes because that will create a smaller tax base, right? Well, they got less land, so we're taking something off for the land that they lost. <laughs> but this is so this is this is a commercial property, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm just saying that they that that you'll be running their income stream in future years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so if they have a greater expense, yeah, if they have a greater expense, they'll have right less subject to taxes. Yeah, future. it'll show off, you know, show up in their maintenance. Uh, and that's to be dealt with on a year by year basis, not now guessing that there's going to be more. Right. Uh, the expense rate might go from 21 to 22 percent, you know, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Do I, does our town just plow Highland or do they actually remove snow from Highland? Like, do I don't it? know if, how far over they go. I mean, it's a state road, too. So. Right. Needham is yeah. probably responsible for part of it, but the state yeah. may be responsible for part of it, too. All right. So. We're voting to deny that. Uh, no, it's no I'm presenting because you gave them something. Oh, right? I'm sorry. We're, we're voting. To, we're, we're, we're limiting it to the 5%. 5% off. Well, I, what I did right. was took 5% off his rent. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they didn't, income. they actually didn't suggest an alternative number, right? Uh, he said $190,000, but. Uh, we did. Yeah, applicant's opinion value. Okay, I'm sorry. And it says it reduced his parking by 70%. But they only took, I believe, 107 square feet. And it's that little tiny pink strip. So I, that's why I went over to look at the property. And it just, that doesn't make any sense. 
you know, they took um, those, the last page is page 10 is a picture of the property. Can't really see a hell of a lot, but uh, you know, the, the, the amount they took was 163 square feet out of 5,658. So I don't know how that reduces his parking by 70%. I move to grant. But only is limited, right? What's that? Well, you're, you've taken 5%. What number did you get to, Chip? Oh, uh, let's see. It went from 293 to 279.5. So it's 14,200. So we're moving to grant just that limited amount. Correct. Right. I, I'd agree with that limited reduction. Yeah, that's okay. the one you put on the spreadsheet, Chip, that you had marked down denied. I don't know if you looked at that, Barry. Yeah, I did, but I, no, I what I was thinking is we're not we're not agreeing with his rationale or I guess the down to 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 the amount that's there, as Chip just pointed out, an applicant's opinion of value. It's just the limited change, right? Yep. So, yeah. fourteen two. I, I yeah, agree. what I had done too on that master spreadsheet you have, I, I had marked it as denied, and then I went over and took a look at the property and talked to engineering and and changed it, and I forgot to put a, a granted on the, the master spreadsheet. Right. So I I would agree with with um, granting it to the amount of the fourteen two. Okay, you guys are good with that too, right? Okay, so we're on to number 51, which is basically a repeat of the hotel we just looked at. They talk about how the hospitality industry got whacked, and the hospitality industry certainly got whacked, but um, I, re I use the same for These guys gave me no income and expense information, for which really they should be denied right off the bat, but because of you know, what happened with hotels. I just used the exact same formula I used for the property that reported income and expense information to value this hotel. The only difference is there's a, a slightly different number of rooms. So the value went from 17.2 to 11.7 from 21 to 22. And, but this one, I would, I would deny the application simply because they didn't give us any income and expense information. Um, which they're required to by law. Plus, um, I had a reasonable formula to work with because I had income and expense information from the other hotel up the street. And they're pretty close to identical, except the, uh, the residence in is probably has more amenities for the people staying there because they have little kitchenettes and stuff. But uh, they charge about the same amount for their average daily room rate. So you drop the value by 6 million and they think it's at 9.6, 9.8. Nine nine eight. Eight. Nine eight. I vote to deny. Yeah, I mean, they give me no justification for the 9.8. All right, I got gotcha. you. Agreed. 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 Yeah, agree. Okay. We are down to two applications that I'm still negotiating with the guys. The other one, one of them is the uh, Sheridan Hotel. And I think while we were talking, the guy sent me an email of his analysis. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pass that on to you. We got to have one more meeting anyway, because uh, the deadline for people to file exemptions, like the deferrals you guys went through last week, is not till April 1st. So if we set up a meeting for right after the, um, the 1st of April, I will um, get those applications done and can do any kind of exemption work we have to do and basically call it a ball game before the hey, election. Off topic. I was confused or it was kind of awkward. What was that Dave Davidson asking us at the end of the last meeting? Was he asking us to take your position? Or, no. Or, um, <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> no, there's a possible internal candidate. 
that uh, doesn't have a lot of assessing experience, but he does have experience in a portion of the mapping and that kind of stuff. And he also is married to an assessor um, because they, the last time they put the ad out, they got 450 hits on the ad and nobody applied. <laughs> So um, where is his spouse and assessor? I think it's Plainville. I'm, I'm meeting with the guy tomorrow. Okay. Um, the, the, spouse of, the spouse doesn't want to move to this, to this office? I guess not. I don't, I don't know. If she, I, I'm not going there. No, no. I just, it's, I only think like it's, it would be nice to have someone experienced, right? Yeah. But uh, they're on the fourth round of ads. And we had the guy that was, you know, one click away from taking the job and he bailed out and there hasn't really been anybody since the guy from Boston, I guess, wanted, you know, far more than I'm making to start with no experience. Um, so this guy, again, the, the only reason I cottoned to him is because I sent him an email and he kept sending me back. What the hell are you still doing here? I should come and take your job. And I thought he was kidding. And then I talked to him a little bit and he seemed like he was actually serious. So I told Dave to reach out to him and Dave reached out to him. And I just got an email from him Friday. He wanted to know if he could sit down and talk to me. So I think Dave was setting you up for possibly going a, a roundabout way of doing this. So hey, um, Stan, are you leaving the board? Yes, yes, yes. As of the elect, what the elections April twelfth, and and nobody's running for the position right now. Yes, Walter is. Walter oh, okay. McDonough, I called him and told him about it. He's, yeah, he lied. Okay, he's the guy. Okay, so he's just he's just going as a write-in. He's not. Uh, no, I think paper. he I think he took out papers. So I, I okay. what? What? What would you say, Chip? He's the guy. Walter was. I guess on the I board. beat him. Yes. He forgot to pick out. Gonna come team. back and he's gonna yell at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Were you on when Walter was on? For a I year, he would, Ar Artie wrong. would have been. Artie would have been for a yeah. year. Walter, I remember him. Oh, well, yeah. I never saw his face because he was like he would never turn his camera on. He was right. Yeah, because he um, he could either get sound or he could get a picture, but he couldn't get both at the same time. Well, the one time, the one time we did get the picture was when he had the lollipop in his mouth and we were talking to the taxpayers. Can I ask you something? Wait, did his three years end and he 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 did it again and he lost to to you, he, Barry? He to do yeah, papers. so we, I ended up as a writing candidate and he didn't get his papers in, so he was a writing candidate. And I guess, uh, you know, he, he I, I think the Needham Democratic Committee was behind him, and he assumed that would just be enough, but it it wasn't. The so power, of face, power of Facebook took next down. year. Power yeah. of Facebook day of. I mean, this yeah. was something I learned in the morning. I didn't know I was really running for this, but it it turned into. Uh, Stanley, I, how long I, have I mean, you been on? I like this. Three years. This is your third year. Yeah. Yeah. And so my third year will be up next year, I guess. Does that mean I would have to run again, or can I can't just stay on? No, you got to run. You I think no, but but paperwork. but Artie, Artie, if you get your paperwork in on time, incumbents will just roll into the position. I mean, it's it. Walter just that didn't get the paperwork, him, right? so it, you know. Yeah, he didn't get the papers, and he was stuck in court in Newton. I think he's an attorney. Oh, and. Uh, Waited till the last day, got stuck in court in Newton and never got the papers in. And uh, Barry, you must have just wandered into the clerk's office and seen nobody there. So I was well, the voting booth. I voted. I went to vote early and there was no one listed for assessor. So I told a few friends, hey, I wrote myself in. Why don't you write it in? And then it became a little bit of a Facebook virus that day of like, vote for me. I got a call from people who were saying, these people are at the voting booth saying, like, there's a guy's name I'm supposed to vote for. What is it? It's almost like Pollock. And they, they <laughs> apparently I got something like 300-ish, maybe three, 
300, 300 something write-in votes, I think, which is which is a lo large amount of write-in votes. It's because we were mid-pandemic and people had nothing more to do. And I put it out to like the people who were on the petition about Muzzy and decreasing stuff. So when they went out that day, they, uh, I guess people, you know. I didn't call up against anyone. It was just, they needed one and yeah. I put the papers in. Yeah. No, no, I think if Walter had gotten the paper, if he if he had gotten in his paperwork, he would have received an easy thousand votes. Instead, he he still thought he'd be fine just with a little word of mouth. I think he got about 150, 175 votes, something like that. I saw it. And I think I people people just uh, I don't know. My name was easier to spell or something. <laughs> Anyways, April 4th work for you guys. That's a Monday. That's fine. That's fine with me. I don't see why not. Yes. Eight fifteen again. That'd be great. If I if I can remember that, I'm blanked out on the eight fifteen. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I can't do eight, but it just it leaves an option if. Okay. If, yeah. You know, and it, so. it probably will be just a couple of applications, and um, you know, some deferral stuff. But we just have to we have to wait till after the deferral deadline um otherwise we could get it done next week so i'll post it for april 4th and if you guys can stick your stuff in your mailbox i'll come and get it from the last two meetings maybe i'll bring it with me since i gotta sign that thing oh okay you coming in today i guess so i don't have a busy day so yeah i signed that on friday if people have me sign the right thing chip yeah nancy told me so, all right. So, Stan and Barry, I'll yeah, come and get yours. Up. Are you going to yeah. bring yours in? No, 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 yeah. no. I'll put them in the mailbox. What? I'll bring mine in. Are you bringing I'll... his, and I'm coming to get Stan's and Barry's? Do you yeah. really have to come, or is it okay to just bring it next time? Like, uh, no, I'd rather run it through the shredder. It's got too much stuff in there that if if one of them gets out, you know that that'll we'll be all go down. That'll be so am I, am I putting it in the mailbox right now so that uh, you're, you're in the coming. next 20 minutes? Yeah, that's guy. Our mailman comes at like late afternoon. So I, I just hate, you know, maybe the next worst thing to just holding it and giving it to you later is uh, putting it in a mailbox for a full day or something. No, no, so, I'm coming out in the next 20 minutes. All right, I'll put it out there. Good enough. This time I'll remember. All, all right. right. Uh, we if you're not in the right office. Right. If you're not in the office and I bring this, what do you want me to do? Give it to someone? Oh, just give it to Nancy. Because you got to sign a couple of things anyway. Yep. All right. I'll All be right. Around. We will uh, see you on the 4th. Yep. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye, Bye guys.
Great. Um, I think we can Okay. So I saw the email from Marjorie presenter. Yeah. Um, it's prioritized for priority. Okay. Um, I'll see if I can track it down before I go after. Collect all my paperwork. 